Hello, uh, my name is Molly. Welcome to another drawing video. Before I really get started talking about anything else, I'm just going to show you what I'm using for this piece. Just a Stedler 2B pencil. Um, I love these pencils, they're really great. Um, also, I use a few different pens. <laughs> Just trying to get them all organized, uh, but they're all the same type. The Sakura Pigma Sensei. Uh, I use them in a couple different sizes. Um, I realized after the fact I have two sixes in here. <laughs> That's because one of them was dying, so I had to grab another one. Uh, and then just a regular art eraser. This is also Stedler brand. Uh, you can get all of this stuff at any art store, and even sometimes at places like Walmart or really good dollar stores. <laughs> so today, um, while I'm drawing, I'm just going to be talking a little bit about tattoo apprenticeships. Um, obviously, because of the current state of the world, probably some places um, haven't been taking a lot of apprentices lately. Uh, it's hard to teach somebody when your shop is opening and closing due to a pandemic. Uh, but I still thought that this would be information that people might find valuable. Um, I get asked very often, and I know other tattoo artists also get asked, um, how did you get an apprenticeship? Can you apprentice me? Are you looking for an apprentice? I know that people want to get into this industry. And so I thought I would just go through a few of the questions that I get asked all the time, um, and also just talk a little bit about what it's like to have this job and things that you should consider if you feel like you want to pursue a career in tattooing. So the first question that I want to cover is, uh, what is an apprenticeship? Um, I think some people don't even really know what they're signing up for. Uh, I know that I kind of didn't when I got my apprenticeship. Um, I just had a vague understanding. Uh, so basically a tattoo apprenticeship is uh, an opportunity for you as someone who doesn't know how to tattoo. You get to go spend time in a tattoo shop with tattoo artists and be mentored and you get to learn about the process learn about all the different pieces of being a tattoo artist from you know cleaning and sanitizing to drawing to actually tattooing to dealing with clients um, and usually in exchange for that learning you have to do a lot of the dirty work of the shop stuff like mopping and cleaning and setting up and tearing down for artists Sometimes, you know, grabbing coffee or any other little errands, pretty much anything that the shop needs done, the apprentice usually does that. Uh, traditionally, for a very long time in the tattoo industry, um, getting an apprenticeship under someone who already had the skills was pretty much the way to get into the industry. Um, a lot of it was about who you knew and a lot of the information about how to tattoo was sort of heavily guarded within the culture. Um, and luckily, as tattooing is evolving and growing, um, in some ways that practice is changing. So getting an apprenticeship is not the only way to get into the industry anymore. Um, there are a lot of artists out there, a lot of very talented, successful people who are self-taught or who had very non-traditional um, ways of getting into the industry. They didn't do quote unquote traditional apprenticeships. Um, and there's a whole variety of reasons to choose different routes to get into the industry. And I think that a lot of different paths are valid. And as long as you're being safe and you're challenging yourself to learn as much as you can and to take care of your clients and take care of yourself, then I think that there are a lot of valid ways to start being a tattoo artist. But that being said, uh, I did have a fairly traditional street shop apprenticeship. And so I'm just gonna talk a little bit from my own experience um, if you're looking for information on how to get into tattooing in a different way or how to get into maybe stick and poke tattooing, anything like that, 
I don't really have any experience with that. Um, so this might not be the video for you. So on that note, um, I guess the big question that most people usually ask is very broad and just how do I get an apprenticeship? Um, that is a very hard question to answer uh, because everybody's a little bit different. Every path is a little bit different. Um, but some good advice that I feel like I can give anyone who's looking for a tattoo apprenticeship is firstly to draw a lot. Uh, you obviously will be drawing all the time. If you want to be a tattoo artist, you will spend so much of your life drawing. So you should just start now. Start building up your portfolio and start building up your skills and just draw a lot uh, so that, you know, if and when uh, someone at a tattoo shop ever asks you for a portfolio, you'll have something substantial to show them. Uh, I really don't think that it matters whether you have a digital or traditional portfolio. Um, I think having both is great and you know some shops will want you to email it to them and some shops will want you to bring it in in person. Um, so it doesn't really matter, just have drawings. Digital files are a great backup but the real thing should be just as good. I think in the future I'll probably talk a little bit about putting together a portfolio, uh, my experience with what works and what doesn't in a portfolio, uh, but I'm going to save that for a separate video because I feel like it's a really big long tangent. But I will say that when putting together a portfolio, focus on your work that you think is best. Whatever that means to you, the stuff you're most proud of, the stuff you worked the hardest on, in my experience, that's the stuff that we love to see when people bring a portfolio into a tattoo shop. Um, and then after, you know, drawing a lot, putting together a portfolio, uh, it's time to start communicating with tattoo shops. Um, a lot of artists I think will advise that you should get tattooed quite a bit if you're looking to become part of the tattoo industry. And I definitely do agree with that in some ways. Um, it's good to familiarize yourself with local tattoo shops and artists, um, and it's good to experience getting tattooed and to talk with artists while they're working if they're cool with that. But on that note, I had probably three or four very small, not cool at all, um, little tattoos when I got my apprenticeship. And I think too, for some people, getting tattooed frequently is not accessible um, for whatever reason. Uh, maybe you live somewhere where there's not a lot of tattoo shops. Maybe you don't have the disposable income. Maybe your city is currently in lockdown. Um, whatever the reason is, you know, you can't always get tattooed all the time in the pursuit of your dream. So yeah, do your best to familiarize yourself with the shops and artists in your area. But I think that, you know, sending an email and offering your support to artists in other ways um, can also help you figure out if anyone's looking for an apprenticeship. Um, maybe, you know, follow your favorite artists on Instagram to see if they make any posts about it. Follow your favorite shops. Um, I know that my shop in Toronto gets emails all the time from people looking for apprenticeships and it doesn't bother us. There is no harm in emailing every single shop in your area and just saying, hi, uh, I'm so-and-so and I'm looking for an apprenticeship, wondering if you're looking for any apprentices, attached is my portfolio. Um, just keep it professional, keep it polite, include your name. Uh, you'd be so shocked at how often we get those types of emails and the person hasn't even signed their name. Um, so yeah, just reach out to shops and see if anybody reaches back. In normal times, I would probably also advise you to visit the tattoo shops that are in your area and see what the vibe is like, see what the artists are like in person. Um, this might be a little bit less of a good idea um, because of COVID, um, but hopefully one day just being able to drop into a tattoo shop easily will be a thing that you can do um, because often, you know, as important it is to just find someone willing to teach you, 
not everybody vibes, right? Sometimes you try to learn from someone and their teaching style doesn't fit your learning style and doesn't inherently mean that there's anything wrong with either of you. It's just that you don't vibe. So that's the one good thing about spending time with the artists and the shops that you're thinking of potentially wanting to work for is you get a sense of what it's like there um, because you'll be spending a lot of time there if they do offer you an apprenticeship. Um, so I just want to cut in to say that at this point um, I'm kind of done this main sketch and I decided that I wanted to color it. Um, so I got out the gouache Honestly, every time I say that word, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, um, but it's basically uh, almost watercolor, almost acrylic paint, um, and it's great because I can use it in this little sketchbook that I have and it doesn't go through the pages too badly. Um, I know I didn't really zoom in on the brand of paint that I'm using, but I'll include it in the description below. Um, another thing that I wanted to bring up about apprenticeships that I think is really important to mention is Apprenticeships in the tattoo industry are almost 100% of the time completely unpaid. Um, you will not make a dollar from that job until your apprenticeship is finished and you are actually tattooing clients. Um, this is a weird practice <laughs> and it only exists because the tattoo industry is so unregulated and so sort of unofficial um, in a way. Um, in some ways this can be really freeing and in some ways it can be really restrictive. And I think that the tradition of completely unpaid apprenticeships can often be really restrictive. Um, what it means is that people who can't afford to spend a lot of hours a week at an apprenticeship without making any money don't get to enter this industry regardless of how committed or talented they are. I was incredibly lucky when I found an apprenticeship because I was able to move back in with my dad and uh, work out of his restaurant on whatever hours I chose. And I had a support system while I was working a full-time job for free. Um, I spent usually five to six days a week, um, long hours at the tattoo shop. And it meant that I got to learn a lot faster and I got to progress a lot faster and I'm very aware that that is not a model that is sustainable for most people. So if you are looking into an apprenticeship, keep that in mind. Keep in mind that you need to be able to commit a significant amount of time out of your weekly schedule to basically work a job as an assistant slash janitor slash student slash food delivery person um, without making any money at all. Um, and shops will often demand a large portion of your time. And it's great if you can do that, but if you can't do that, maybe try looking into more non-traditional ways to get into the industry. Just make sure that whatever route you take to start your tattoo journey, just make sure that you're being safe, that you know, if you're going to buy tattoo materials or test out some tattoo materials, make sure you've done your research and particularly make sure that you're not going to give anyone a uh, blood disease. Um, there are lots of resources online for learning about bloodborne pathogens and um, I know in Canada, I believe it's the Red Cross that uh, you can get a certificate from. It's super easy. I do it every year. Um, so do the artists at my shop. Uh, basically, you just go to the Red Cross website and they have courses that you do have to pay for, but I honestly think it's about $40. Um, and you just take a little quiz at the end and they let you print off a certificate and it teaches you all about um, some of the bloodborne pathogens that can be really harmful to people if you're not tattooing in a clean environment or if you're not um, you know wearing gloves or switching your gloves often enough um, all that kind of stuff so I beg of you if you're not going to do an apprenticeship please look into all that stuff and you know what honestly even if you are going to do an apprenticeship um, please look into that stuff um, it's really important and hopefully 
uh, an artist or a shop who is training you would also direct you to do that. Um, but yeah, just, just be safe. However you decide to get into the industry, just remember that you know tattooing is about a needle piercing someone's skin. And anytime you pierce someone's skin with anything, there are chances that there can be infections or diseases associated with that. Basically, just be safe, kids. <laughs> I mean, everyone at some point wants to give their friend a tiny tattoo on their ankle with a sewing needle and some India ink, and I get it, you know, <laughs> we've all been there. But just be safe and just remember that if you want this to be your career, um, a reputation for not being clean or not being safe can follow you for a long time. While we're on the topic of safety, um, I just want to address sort of another side to that, um, which is about keeping yourself safe during an apprenticeship, um, especially if you are a woman or a black person, person of color, um, queer person, trans person, someone who, you know, maybe doesn't fit into that old world tattoo mentality. Um, the tattoo industry can be a tough place to navigate. Um, I am a woman and I am bisexual, queer, um, so I know a little bit about it, but I also know that, um, I had a lot of privileges as well going into this industry. Um, I'm white, um, as I talked about before, I had some financial security, um, and those things do make a difference, a huge difference. So I can only speak of my own experience, but I can also speak of things that I've witnessed in the tattoo industry and things I've seen in shops that I did not like. Just like with any job, um, there are going to be people in tattoo shops that are racist and sexist and misogynist and bigoted and close-minded and think that tattooers should only be a certain way. Um, this is obviously not true, um, but it can make looking for an apprenticeship and keeping an apprenticeship very difficult. Um, I know a lot of people in the tattoo industry who jumped at the chance for an apprenticeship because it's exciting and you want the job so badly and you know an apprenticeship can be a great way to get in. But then you find yourself in a shop or working with artists who don't treat you very well or who make you feel really uncomfortable or who are outright abusive and aggressive and you don't know what to do because you wanted this job so badly and it feels like another opportunity will never come around. Um, and so I've seen a lot of people stay in really abusive, horrible, gross tattooing situations for those very reasons. Um, I myself have put up with a lot of bad shops um, because I really just wanted to work so badly. Um, and those are stories for another day. But the point that I'm trying to make is just because someone offers you an apprenticeship doesn't make them a good person. Um, and just because a shop hires you doesn't mean that you have to stay there forever. Because apprenticeships um, and even real employment at tattoo shops can be so unofficial and so uh, hard to come by, um, some shops do think that they can take advantage of people. Um, and I'm here to tell you that in the tattoo world today, you do not have to put up with that shit. Whatever it is, don't put up with it. There are a hundred thousand tattoo artists out there in the world, and I guarantee you somebody else can give you an apprenticeship if you are truly in an unsafe and bad situation. There are lots of tattoo artists who own shops now who are, you know, queer people who are people of color or indigenous or black or trans. There are tons of us opening shops all over the world and they might seem few and far between, but I think there are more of them than we even realize. Um, a lot of shops are incredibly proud of the diversity of their ownership and of the way that they treat their artists and their apprentice and their clients. And those are the type of shops that you should try to seek out. Um, 
Again, I know that this isn't always something that is immediately accessible to people, and that's tough. Um, but all I'm trying to say is just don't sacrifice your personal safety for a job, even a cool job. Um, because it's just not worth it. So on a slightly more positive note, um, I think there are a lot of things in an apprenticeship that are worth it. Um, if you can find a place that you're comfortable and that really teaches you and, you know, isn't making your life miserable in any way, an apprenticeship can be great. Um, it can be really hard work. Um, you do a lot of cleaning, <laughs> a lot of waiting around, a lot of learning, um, a lot of cleaning, so much cleaning. Um, but that is stuff that you need to get to know if you're going to work in a tattoo shop. Um, cleaning is a big part of being a tattoo artist. Um, but also it can be so fun to spend your day hanging out with tattoo artists, watching them do what they're good at, do what they love. Um, a lot of a traditional apprenticeship is just watching people tattoo and asking questions and seeing tattoos come together, seeing the whole process from the consultation to the touch-up. Um, and that can be really fun. Um, I loved that part of my apprenticeship. I loved learning a new skill and trying new things. Um, I loved that a lot of my day was spent drawing. And honestly, it wasn't even really until I had an apprenticeship that I got really serious about drawing every day and that I really committed myself to treating art like it was my job. Um, I also think that spending a lot of time in a tattoo shop doing an apprenticeship the traditional way um, is great in terms of teaching you about what it means to deal with clients and to, you know, have some uh, bedside manner while you're tattooing, what to say, what not to say, um, how to deal with people who don't like the drawing or don't like the finished product or, um, you know, people who, uh, don't know what they want and really need your help figuring that out. Um, there's so many different types of clients and types of situations that you'll run into when you're dealing one-on-one -on -one with people, making art with other people, um, and, it can be hard to learn that stuff alone or, you know, working only on projects and clients that you know or are comfortable with. Um, when I got my apprenticeship, I had drawn tattoos for people that I knew. Um, I had a couple of tattoos myself, uh, just small ones, but I wasn't super familiar with the industry. Um, and, uh, for example, something that I found really helpful and really challenging was during my apprenticeship, um, the shop owner often gave me sort of drawing challenges. Um, he would tell me, you know, uh, to draw a traditional rose, for example, and uh, to dabble in different styles, to try different things. Um, and it really got me ready for what tattooing would be like because most of the appointments that you do in at least the first few years of working as a tattoo artist will be all different styles, all different subject matters, all different um, sizes, um, color, black work, maybe some realism, maybe some text work. People want all sorts of different tattoos. And when you're just starting out, you need all the practice that you can get. Um, so you take on a lot of projects that maybe are a little outside your comfort zone or in a style that you're not as familiar with and working in a shop can really help get you ready for that type of variety and it can you know get you familiar with what types of tattoos are popular uh, what people come back for again and again um, for example I really suggest that if you want to be a tattoo artist that you start drawing roses <laughs> because people will always want flower tattoos. <laughs> so yeah, I, I truly have nothing against street shops. I do not think they are inherently a bad place to learn. Um, I think there are tons of valuable things to learn in a street shop. Um, and there are just as many valuable things to work in a private studio or one-on-one -on -one with your friend or 
by looking up things on the internet and asking questions. And the point is, is that an apprenticeship is like going to school more so than like having a job. Uh, You don't get paid and you work really hard and you hopefully learn something. Uh, On that note, uh, I would really recommend that anyone trying to get into tattooing, um, especially if you are a white person trying to get into tattooing, start now with educating yourself on racism and colorism in this industry. Um, And with the actual roots of tattooing, um, the people and the cultures responsible for creating tattooing and, you know, honoring it and bringing it to be what it is now. Uh, Because the tattoo industry, particularly in North America, but all over the world, um, has been whitewashed completely. And I know that when I entered the industry, I didn't know anything about the history and culture. And I learned from someone who didn't really teach me about tattooing different skin tones and different skin types. Um, And it took me a really long time to learn those things. And it it was a process. Um, Even things like taking photos of different skin tones can be really challenging. Um, So start searching out those resources now. Um, There are so many people and artists out there who offer amazing resources for learning about uh, tattooing different skin tones and, you know, using different um, inks on different people. And uh, it's really important to teach yourself that stuff because the person you're learning from might not teach it to you. And if you're getting into tattooing, you need to be ready to tattoo anyone, anyone at all. Um, There should never be a reason um, based on someone's skin that you don't agree to tattoo them. So if you're not ready for that, um, you're not ready to get into the industry. My main point is just to be ready to learn if you're looking for an apprenticeship. Um, There are a lot of fun and exciting things about the tattoo industry. And I think that places like Instagram have really romanticized what it means to be a tattoo artist and to work at a tattoo shop. Um, And I am just here to tell you that being a tattoo artist is the best job that I've ever had. It is so much fun. Um, It's so fulfilling and so challenging. And I learn something every time I tattoo. Um, And I've met some of the best people and the most talented artists that I've ever had the pleasure to meet. Um, But it is also hard and there's a lot to learn and it is a constantly evolving learning process. Um, So just be ready for both, you know, be realistic about the fact that tattooing is a job just like any other job and some parts will be hard and some parts will be easy. And I know too that it can seem really impossible to get an apprenticeship if that's the route you're hoping to take. Um, There seem to be a lot of tattoo artists out there, a lot of shops that aren't taking on apprentices. Um, I know that I don't feel quite ready to take on an apprentice. Um, And I know a lot of other artists who feel the same. They don't feel ready to be a teacher and to take on the responsibility of training another person. I think that uh, because the tattoo industry has been changing and growing so much, there's a lot of young artists out there. um, And that's A good thing in a lot of ways, but it definitely does mean a lot of artists who don't feel ready for an apprentice. So just don't get too discouraged if you reach out to a few different shops or a few different people and they say, sorry, I'm not looking for someone. Uh, I guarantee you most of the time it's nothing to do with you as an artist or person. It's completely to do with the fact that for whatever reason, they're just not ready to take on an apprentice uh, because it is a big deal. It's a big responsibility. It's another person in the space. Um, It's someone that you're supposed to teach and their career will be directly impacted by yours. So if you are getting a lot of, you know, sorry no's from different shops, I would encourage you to just keep trying, keep drawing 
and keep building a strong portfolio and keep connecting with the tattoo artists and the shops that you like or that are in your area. Because like with, you know, following any dream, uh, the road's not always easy. And part of the struggle might be just finding someone who wants to take you on as an apprentice. Um, so just don't give up. And one day, hopefully, if it's your goal, you will find an apprenticeship. And like I said too, uh, maybe try exploring some of the more non-traditional ways to get into the tattoo industry if that is something that sounds appealing to you. Um, there are lots of different routes to take and there are lots of different people out there willing to offer advice and expertise and opportunities. So just keep your eyes open and keep drawing and keep searching. And on that note too, uh, just don't be afraid of tattoo artists. <laughs> you know, that sounds silly, but um, I know that when I was looking for sort of my in into the industry, when I was thinking, oh, maybe I want to be a tattoo artist, I really was intimidated by the tattoo artists that I knew of. Um, and I don't know really what, where that feeling came from. I just was nervous to ask them questions. Um, and I honestly love it when people send me DMs on Instagram or, you know, reach out to me in whatever way and ask me questions about my job and about the industry. Um, I really am passionate about this job and I'm really in love with this industry and I think it is such a gorgeous creative place and I'm happy to answer questions that people have. So if you have questions, reach out to artists. Um, most of them are on Instagram. A lot of them have, you know, uh, emails or websites where you can ask things. Um, just find artists that you like. Maybe uh, you like their style or you have been tattooed by them and you really like them as a person. Whatever it is, uh, seek out those artists and ask them questions. And, uh, you know, they might not answer. Not everyone will, but some of them might. And the worst thing that can happen is they say, no, sorry, I won't help you. Um, but the best thing that can happen is that maybe they'll give you a little insight onto, you know, shops in your area or artists that are looking for apprentices or just, you know, portfolio tips, anything like that. Um, there's no harm in asking. And I'm a big believer that the artistic community should be more open with advice like this and helping people get into the industry, you know, there's no shortage of inspiration and there's no shortage of clients. And so I think sharing knowledge is really powerful and great. Um, so yeah, on that note, my DMs are always open. Um, if you have any questions about tattooing, feel free to message me on Instagram or I mean, you can leave a comment on this video as well. Um, I'm happy to answer comments. Um, but yeah, just, uh, don't be afraid to learn something, I think, is the overarching moral of this video. Uh, so yeah, I think that is all I've got for you today. Um, hopefully if you're someone looking to get into tattooing, this video was informative. Uh, like I said, feel free to leave a question in the comments if you have one. Um, and, uh, like always, uh, you can find links to more of my work down in the description, uh, link to my Instagram and to my website. Um, and those links are also on my channel all the time. Um, oh, I also want to mention, uh, that the beautiful background music for this video was created by my dear friend, Annie King Smith. Um, she is a musician in Toronto, and I'm also going to put some links to her work and her socials down below. Um, she's a fabulous human being and makes beautiful music, so please check her out if you've got a minute. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back in just a couple of days with another video about drawing and art and I don't know what yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I will leave you with the last few minutes of this little rose painting and uh, I'll say goodbye.
So uh, thanks for watching and have a good one, everybody.